everyone. In this video, we're going to be finding the maximum value of a trigonometric function. We have sine theta to the fourth power plus cosine theta to the fourth power, and we are going to find the maximum value. Now, I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, first of all, I'm thinking about can I find boundaries for sine theta to the fourth power? Because I do know, hopefully you do know, sine squared theta is between 0 and 1. Why? Because let's go back to basics and sine theta, and the same thing goes for cosine theta, must be between negative 1 and 1, inclusive if theta is a real number, right? We're talking about real numbers here. Complex numbers will be dealt with later in another channel, which is a plus bi, right? You know that, hopefully. Now, so using this idea, if I raise both sides to the fourth power, then I should not be getting any negative values, obviously, but I could still get a zero. So my sine theta to the fourth power is gonna be like between zero and one. Of course, you can take zero, right? And then same thing for cosine theta to the fourth power. Now, as a quick shortcut, kind of like a, freshman's dream maybe. Can we just add these two inequalities? I mean, you can add inequalities, right? And then get zero and sine theta to the fourth and cosine theta to the fourth between zero and two. Yes and no. Uh, well, you can add inequalities, but the problem with that is these functions are not independent because we have the Pythagorean theorem, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. We can kind of isolate one of these from here, like let's say cosine squared, let's write it as one minus sine squared. And then when you square that one more time, this is actually gonna give you one minus two sine squared plus sine to the fourth theta. So when you look at the values, you know, things are gonna be a little different because the value of cosine theta to the fourth basically depends on the value of sine squared. Make sense? So this might give you some boundaries and you kind of need to check if that works but it doesn't necessarily give you, because we're looking for the maximum value, this uh, could be a loose inequality. Like we can, have, we can have stricter boundaries. Make sense? Anyways, so let's go ahead and do this then. We gotta find a connection and we said that, okay, sine squared plus cosine squared is one. Why don't we start with that and just work it out. So since this is equal to one, I can go ahead and square both sides, can't I? And that's gonna give me sine theta to the fourth plus cosine theta to the fourth. Allow me to write the squares first. Plus two AB is gonna give me two sine squared theta cosine squared theta. And of course the sum is still one. Okay, with the fourth powers, this is a nice identity. And I wanna isolate the sum of fourth powers because that's what I'm trying to maximize, right? And that should give you an idea about the second method. Don't tell anyone if you know it. Okay, now, this is my the sum of fourth powers. How do you maximize it? Is sine theta times cosine theta bounded? And the answer is absolutely. Here's what happens. Think about the double angle formula. Trigonometry has a lot of formulas, so you're gonna know all of them, right? It's two sine theta cosine theta. And if you square both sides, you're gonna get sine squared two theta, which is four sine squared theta times cosine squared theta. But I do have two times that, that's okay. You can divide both sides by two, and that's gonna give you two sine squared theta cosine squared theta equals one half of sine squared two theta. Make sense? Okay, great. So I got this. Now what I can do is I can kind of put these two together, right? But how am I gonna find something for sine squared two theta? Right? Well, the sine squared two theta is basically between zero and one again, if you multiply both sides by one half. But here's what I want you to pay attention to. Notice that we have one minus this. So I I'm kind of gonna work this out uh, as follows. I'm gonna start with sine squared two theta, which is what I have on the right hand side here. And then I kind of wanna negate it because this is between zero and one, right? You agree? And then if you negate it, and then you're gonna have, kind of switch around, negative one is gonna be here and zero is gonna be here, which makes sense, right? And then here's what I would like to do. Multiply both sides by one half, 
Why? Because that's going to give me what I need. You'll see in a little bit. And this is going to be negative 1 half, negative 1 half, sine squared, 2 theta, and 0 is unchanged. Make sense? Now, let's go ahead and add 1 to both sides. Plus 1, and plus 1, and plus 1. That's going to give me 1 minus 1 half, which is 1 half, positive, right? And then here we're going to get 1 minus 1 half sine squared 2 theta, and that's going, to be less, that's going to be less than or equal to 1. Great. This is the expression, and I know these are strict boundaries because we know that sine of any angle cannot exceed 1, so its square cannot exceed 1. And its square cannot be negative, so the minimum it can be is going to be 0. And guess what? These give you actually two questions that are answered at the same time. This gives you the minimum value, and this gives you the maximum value we were looking for. And what is this equal to, by the way? 1 minus 1 half sine squared is equal to, yes, the sum of the fourth power. So in other words, we found that sine theta to the fourth plus cosine theta to the fourth is between 1 and 1 half, and this is pretty strict, so the maximum value we're looking for is actually 1. And you may think about, like, how is this value attained? So I kind of checked it out. What happens if sine and cosine are the same? Then they're both going to equal root 2 over 2 because they're, the sum of their squares is 1, right? And when you do the fourth powers, in this case, you don't get the maximum value. You get 1 half. You get the minimum value. How do you get the maximum? Good question, right? Well, you get the maximum if sine theta is 0 and cosine theta is plus minus 1 or the other way around. Make sense? Okay, that's basically when you get the sum of the fourth powers. So, that brings us to the second method. Let's go ahead and do it. So, the second method is going to use an awesome method called calculus. To find the maximum or minimum value of a function, you can kind of look at local maxima minima, absolute minima maxima, whatever. We're going to do a little bit of calculus. I'm going to leave it at... Uh, I'm not going to give you too many details, but hopefully you can take it from there. If you differentiate this function of theta with respect to theta, can I tell you what it's going to look like? It's going to be 4 sine cube theta cosine theta plus 4 cosine cube theta times negative sine. So you're going to use the power rule and then the derivative of the inside, the chain rule. And then this can be combined. And let me tell you what that's going to look like. It's going to turn into negative sine for theta. You might be a little surprised, like, why is it so simple, right, the derivative? Because if you really think about the original function written in this form, when you differentiate this, you're going to bring the 2 to the front, uh, reduce the power, and then multiply by the derivative of sine, which is cosine. So sine times cosine is going to give you the double angle, which is 4 theta, and some constants, and of course, some, some numbers are going to disappear. Get the idea? Hopefully you do. This is going to be the derivative. I kind of skipped some steps, but please try to get that. And now when you set this equal to 0, we're going to find the critical points. And guess what? Theta is going to have a lot of values like pi over 8, 3 pi over 8, 5 pi over 8, so on and so forth, all the way up to 15 pi over 8. And some of these should give us the max value. But what do we need for the max? Let me tell you the second derivative test, which is negative 4 cosine 4 theta. You see, that's very easy to differentiate, by the way. And that needs to be less than 0. Because why? You do need uh, a horizontal tangent for a function, but if you want max, you want something that's concave down because the second derivative basically gives you the concavity. All right? So basically the answer is 1 again, but which value is going to give it to you? you got to find out. Okay? So the answer is 1. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.